Okay, uh, again, my name is Hailong Wan from uh, Pacific Northwest National Lab. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank the organizing committee for inviting me and uh, also would like to thank my co-authors, Phil Rash and Graham Feingold and the funding agencies. And uh, Bruce, Bruce just uh, gave a very nice uh, overview and uh, introduction to the idea I'm going to uh, present and also thanks him for the extra time I might have. And uh, the geoengineering uh, we're talking about is about the deliberate m manipulation of the Earth climate uh, to counteract the effect of global warming by the release of greenhouse gases. So the, there are a few, quite a few uh, notable projects uh, have been proposed. Uh, the idea we're the project we are interested in is uh, marine cloud albedo enhancement uh, by using a seawater spray. So it uh, falls uh, within the broader category of solar radiation management. So yeah, Bruce uh, have already touched up on this uh, method. Uh, it was first uh, proposed by John uh, Latham uh, they uh, suggest to uh, suggest injecting submicron sea salt particles to increase the marine stratocumulus cloud albedo to offset the 3.7 watts per meter square forcing from the doubling of CO2. And then later on, Sauter et al. proposed this uh, nice uh, wind-driven sprayer that can produce sea salt particles to increase the cloud drop number concentration by about 200 per cubic centimeter in a day. So the, this, this kind of idea was evaluated by a few global uh, box modeling studies. They provided uh, uh, important aspects, in, insight into some aspects of uh, aerosol effects on cloud and climate, but they do not allow for uh, some important, important uh, physical and dynamical uh, interactions between aerosol and cloud and precipitations. So process modeling um, is needed to understand the transport of injected particles from the sea surface and the interactions uh, with clouds. And I brought this same uh, satellite visible image to uh, illustrate uh, the motivation of this study. So we know that uh, ship exhaust can modify marine stratocumulus cloud albedos forming this, uh, those nice uh, ship tracks uh, due to a combination of effects of like direct effect, first indirect effect, second, and uh, some many other unknown effect, the dynamic feedbacks. And also in open cells, uh, it could be associated with the idea proposed by uh, uh, Danny Rosenfield, that uh, by switching the open cells to closed cells. But uh, the fact that uh, those, those ship tracks here are not identical and uh, they're so complicated. Like for example, if we zoom in this uh, particular uh, ship track, we see the brightening along the plume, but uh, we see darkening on the side. And also in this area, there's no cloud and no ship tracks. And in these bright clouds, we, 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 don't see, uh, we don't see ship tracks. So, um, so far we, we, we do not, we, we're not able to predict the formation of ship tracks and to well present them in large scale models. So we need uh, to use process modeling to uh, gain more understanding in this subject. So the model we use is the weather research and forecasting model uh, run at pretty fine resolution uh, in a domain size of approximately the uh, grid bo uh, uh, large scale model grid box. So uh, we use uh, a bulk two moment microphysics. I wanted to um, say here is that uh, uh, it's a bulk model, but we use um, beam method to produce some uh, lookup tables for droplet uh, collision and coalescence and sedimentation. We, we do allow larger drops to fall faster. And in the model, the supersaturation is predicted. 
So uh, it's the basis for the calculation of drop growth and evaporation. So for more details about this model, this microphysics, please refer to this, uh, the pa those papers listed here we published. And uh, the initial conditions for the experiment we've done for this study uh, is from the, the second uh, dynamics and uh, chem chemistry uh, of marine stratocumulus cloud field camping. Uh, two, from two research fli flights, uh, the, the research flight one is uh, relatively drier and the research flight two is wetter. So we prescribed uh, heat surface heat fluxes and large scale forcing. So using these two set of uh, soundings and uh, three uh, prescribed background CCN number concentration, we construct uh, four cases. Uh, one is uh, a weekly precipitating case and then a strongly precipitating, precipitating case, uh, non-precipitating wet case is, uh, is pretty relatively more polluted, and the non-precipitating dry, dry case. We also wanted to test um, the importance of injection method. So uh, we have, uh, for each of those cases, we have, we run uh, one, one control case, and then one by, uh, injecting uh, by one single sprayer and then uh, three sprayers and uniform area sources. So, but uh, for all those different injection methods, we keep the, the uh, injection rate the same in terms of total number of particles per unit time. So let's take a look at uh, some results. First, here, here is showing the the wet case uh, with background uh, CCN of 50 was uh, seeded by the one sprayer. So on the left, you see the, the visible cloud albedo, and uh, on, the on the right hand side is the, the pa passive tracer or tagged uh, CCN injected from uh, the surface. So the, the ship uh, sailed from uh, the left to the right. At, the, in a, uh, at y equals to 30 kilometers. So you, see, you, you may see some uh, uh, plume here. That's due to the periodic boundary conditions. So if we uh, compare different cases, uh, again, this is the strongly precipitating case, uh, weekly, uh, non-precipitating plurity case, and uh, dry case. So we see that uh, the, the, the injection performs very differently in different, ca different cases. So uh, it's, it shows that it's more effect overall in terms of albedo enhancement is more effective in the weekly precipitating cases. In the, in this strongly precipitating cases, we, we, we simulated exactly the same as what we s we've seen in the satellite image, the brightening in along the plume, but the darkening on the sides. And there's not much um, enhancement of in terms of uh, cloud, cloud albedo in a very polluted uh, case and in a dry case. So further, uh, if we take a look at the multiple um, sprayer and the uniform seeding case for the precipitating scenarios, uh, the strongly and the weakly precipitating on the, on the, on the uh, left, we see that um, there are some interactions later on in the in the uh, strongly precipitating case. We see that uh, uh, precipitation started a few a few hours later after the seeding, and uh, the precipitation along the plume uh, drives the formation of like a secondary track in between the plumes. So, but uh, if we to calculate the domain average uh, cloud albedo, uh, the enhancement is more effective in a weekly precipitating case, especially in this uniformly seeded scenario. The reason is that um, in this case, you don't need a uh, uh, big uh, increase in uh, CC number to stop to uh, weaken the precip sorry, <laughs> precipitation. So area coverage is more important in this scenario. So um, if you take a look at how the, the injected CCN are transported um, in the boundary layer, uh, on the left uh, it shows the 
the vertical cross section along the sh uh, ship plume, and on the right hand side is the across the ship plume. And vertically, uh, the injected CCN are mixed through the depth of the boundary layer in within minutes. Uh, however, uh, horizontally uh, needs much longer time to mix uh, over tens of kilometers, as seen here. So compare with um, four, <coughs> three other cases, uh, vertically is very similar, but uh, horizontally in this case is more effective because of uh, some uh, kind of mesoscale circulation induced by the suppression of precipitation. So putting all cases together, um, <coughs> what I'm showing here is uh, the 24-hour uh, cloud albedo, average cloud albedo versus uh, cloud drop number. We see that for the precipitating cases as indicated by the warm colors, the, the cloud albedo uh, increases significantly with the drop number concentration. However, for the wet case, for the wet cases uh, here, the the cloud albedo enhancement <coughs> is kind of saturated at this value. And for a dry case, it's, it's saturated at a much lower value. And uh, regardless of uh, the injection method, but for the precipitating cases, the, the injection method is pretty critical to the enhancement of cloud albedo. And then here uh, on the left, or bottom left, I showed, uh, it shows the albedo change with the liquid water path. It's pretty uh, nice linear, I would say linear relationship for the same uh, initial condition here. And so the cloud albedo largely depends on the liquid water path. So now on the right hand side here, um, like uh, Bruce have uh, shown just now, um, the liquid water path and the uh, cloud drop number uh, could vary. So uh, in the nature, there's, and also in the, in the similarity case, there's no pure albedo effect. So, so it's lots of processes going on. OK, in summary, um, <coughs> in this study, we run the cloud scale resolving, the cloud scale, cloud resolving uh, model simulations to uh, study the impact of uh, seawater uh, injection to the marine stratocumulus cloud. Uh, so we, sh we found that uh, the injection strategy is critical in de determining the spatial distribution of injected CCN. And uh, both area coverage and number concentrations are all important, but uh, none, of, none of them uh, emerges as uh, more important than the other. So the impact of CCN injection on cloud albedo depends on meteorology and aerosol background. And uh, the result shows that injection is more uh, is, is, is effective in weakly precipitating boundary layer where additional CCN can, we can rain and uh, retain cloud water. In this case, the cover, area coverage is more important than the number, no, local number concentration. And also, it's effective in a CCN limited scenario, um, which occurs after a heavy or persistent rain. In this case, we need a pretty strong perturbation to uh, uh, have some effect on the albedo enhancement. So it is less effective in the strongly precipitating regime if injected CCN cannot significantly weaken precipitation, and it's, it's less effective in very polluted regime where clouds are already bright enough, we, there's not, not much room to, to further bright, brighten the clouds. And it's pretty uh, ineffective in a water limited dry regime where droplets are small and the liquid water paths are really small. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Questions or comments? Danny. Yeah, in your, in your simulations, uh, you are not able to close open cells, uh, but the observations uh, clearly show otherwise. Uh, therefore, I suggest that you be very careful with the conclusions from the modern simulations, in particular, and also it is a more general call.
observations don't necessarily show cause and effect. Uh, we have to move uh, to take them both. <laughs> okay, that if there is regulations yeah. and confirm the observations, then we can attribute uh, the causality. Let me clarify. Uh, it depends on how, how, you, uh, how you interpret the results. If you uh, actually along those ship tracks, you see that it, you do not have open cells. So it depends on how you interpret the result. You can say that it, the, the, closed, the open cells are prevented from formation in the first place. You know, I, I really like this talk because it's... <laughs> Thank you very much. I've wondered about these problems for many years. <laughs> why we're seeing what we're seeing. But you know, uh, actually what you're seeing is very much what I was showing yesterday as well, uh, in the sense that what you're running into here in, in your studies is the susceptibility limit that uh, Steve Plotnick and Sean Toomey pointed out some years ago. And you're seeing the same thing here, which is not surprising because you're using the same physics to come up with the same conclusion. I, the thing is that these clouds that you're talking about here, when you're talking about your weakly precipitating, strongly precipitating and whatnot, <coughs> is that half your clouds are disappearing on you because of the precipitating, right? You're losing the water is what's uh, happening. And but we, ha we have prescribed uh, surface uh, moisture flux. Yeah, but you're still losing water in your domain. Yes. Uh, if I plot the domain average uh, time evolution of liquid water, liquid water path, it decreased from the beginning then kind of uh, uh, steady uh, after a few hours. Yeah, well, the, the, in, in, when we look, I, in other words, your ship tracks are in what I call my partly cloudy regimes. So these are the things I try to avoid when I look at ship tracks. Uh, typically, and I, I forgot what your cloud liquid, liquid water paths were. Where, how big were your liquid water paths? Uh, for, for, it, for the wet case, for the precipitating case, yeah, it's, those things. it's, uh, it's uh, between 50 to well, That's 100. quite large. Okay, I, I didn't see that. Uh, your, your weekly precipitating was quite small, though, if I remember right. Uh, let me show you could get to the last. Yeah, it's on your last. Yeah, you're 50. That, you know, usually we're up at 100 or so for the clouds that I'm looking at, and, and the stuff I was showing you yesterday yeah, was up at about 150 or so. Yeah, for the for the Pluti, for the Pluti case, the the close there, the uh, overcast case is is about uh, 130. See, that was most of the cases I was showing yesterday. You, you mean this is a smaller or larger? No, no, it's about right. Okay. It's about right, but your 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 uh, weekly precipitating is much smaller. That's, yeah. they're not like what I usually see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two questions. One, uh, when you inject the CCN, is it injected as a spray uh, plume that can cool and evaporate, or is it just CCN? And the second question is, what happens if you were putting in a few giant nuclei in with those smaller nuclei? Um, the answer to the first question is that um, we injected uh, dry CCN. And I did calculate uh, the cooling effect if we evaporate those uh, seawater particles instantaneously in one grid box is quite significant. But uh, as that's just the assumption. We don't know if those particles will evaporate instantaneously. And also, if, if it evaporates instantaneously, it will moisten lines, moisten the grid box very much, so then the, the, the later on they, they will not evaporate all the particles. So, um, yes, I forgot, I forgot your second question, sorry. Is there a giant nuclear? Oh. Uh, all the little things might coagulate or something. The, the original idea is try to avoid giant nuclei. The giant nuclei may initiate the drizzle uh, in the first place, so we try to, uh, it's kind of, we assume <coughs> Uh, the same uh, same uh, distribution of dry CCN in the accumulation mode. We try to avoid giant nuclei. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just curious because there's this, this trend towards doing very, very low resolution simulations of marine stress cumulus, uh, where you know, previously people thought you had to do 10 meters, 5 meters, 
now uh, you know, we're up there, uh, <laughs> like 100 meters, 200 meters. And do you think resolutions have, have you tried to look at the effects of resolution on this? Uh, Yes, we, I did try um, the finer resolution and uh, finer uh, smaller grid spacing at 100 meters. Uh, it doesn't make much difference, but it does take much longer time to run the, such a big domain. You know, five, ten years ago, people would say 100 meters, you can't just trust kids from 100 meters. You, you, so but now it's sort of seems to shift where the whole community has just gone, okay, we can use 300 meter resolution. I don't know, I'm just curious. Um, uh, thanks for the nice work model. <laughs> <laughs> I think the shift is because of the tendency to go to a more cloud organization and everything. And yeah. Yeah. We're looking at different so when you're really looking at cloud organization, you probably yeah, have much larger domains than it's being used. The yeah. 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 Right. yeah, that dynamic simulating in this, you know, those simulations are quite dominant. Okay. But, yeah. but you also see in these, these very thick clouds, though, and I guess you don't have it in your cases where you lose the liquid water because of the extreme production. Yeah, this, uh, for all those four cases are in pretty shallow boundary layer. So the, it's kind of limited. The, the cloud thickness is kind of limited. So we, later on, we're, we're trying to run different cases in different uh, regime, deeper. 